Hello everyone, my name is Muhammad Muni, and today I'm here to present the paper entitled Deep Learning Pipeline for Image Classification on Mobile Phone. This work is supported by Khalifa University of Science and Technology, which is located in Abu Dhabi, United Arab Emirates. First, I'll introduce the problem statement. Then we will discuss the pipeline for image classification on mobile phone. Then we will discuss four use cases and then the concluding section. This article proposes and documents our machine learning framework in form of a tutorial for classifying images using mobile phone. Compared to computers, the performance of deep learning model degrades when deployed on mobile phone, and it requires a systematic approach to find an optimal model for both computers and mobile phones. Many research papers explain image classification on mobile phone, but the following are the reasons to reproduce the existing work. In existing papers, they haven't discussed the performance, the combined or the comparison of performance of a model on computer, mobile phone, and real-time testing. So we included three types of testing. First one is on computer, second one on mobile phone when pictures are loaded from gallery, and the third one is real-time testing. We included source code and also the documentation, which makes it easy to develop any kind of image classification application, which uses machine learning. In this section, we will discuss the pipeline for image classification on mobile phone. There are many websites from which medical plant or object data can be downloaded. The first or the zero step, or step number zero is to place images in a separate folder which belongs to a specific category as shown in the diagram on the left side. Once you obtain the medical images, the next step is to generate sub data sets and to generate images of different sizes. It is important to reduce the size of an image because if the size uh, of the image is huge, it can increase the size of the model. The second step is to divide the data set into training, validation, and test set. And at this step, it's compulsory to set aside few images for real-time testing or when you're gonna test the model on mobile phone. The third step is to develop a deep learning model for training and testing. We use convolution neural network. There are many architecture which can be used. At this step, you can also use data augmentation technique to improve the classification accuracy. And it will make the model uh, good for real-time testing. We can also play with hyperparameters to improve the final accuracy. At this step, there are many ways by which we can uh, improve the performance of the model. For example, we can uh, include multiple layers in the model and we can change the number of neurons or the number of filters in each layer. The fourth step is to convert the model into TensorFlow Lite so it can be deployed on mobile phone. At this step, you can also convert the model to quantized version, which will definitely improve the accuracy as we saw, uh, as we observed in the final testing. The fifth step is to add metadata to the model. And the metadata includes uh, the number of categories that model is going to classify, the author information, image width and height. It is compulsory uh, to add metadata because mobile phone uh, would be able to know like what model is actually trying to do. And there is a difference between uh, the processing engine of computer and mobile phone. So this metadata will help the mobile phone to understand what, smart, what model is trying to do. The sixth step is to choose the application development framework. Here we have two choices. The first one is Flutter. We use Flutter for uh, offline testing when pictures are loaded from the gallery and when pictures are captured from mobile phone. 
camera. When you use Flickr, you can use the same developed application for iOS, Android, and web-based deployment and replace the machine learning model and the label file. And this, the model will work on mobile phone. And you can also use Android develop application development framework. And this is only for Android, or you can use TensorFlow Lite classification example. Once the model is deployed and the application is working, the final step is to test the images, which were not part of training validation or test set. In this section, we will see the direct the resulting directory structure. As the technique is quite computationally expensive, it is important to highlight how the files will be managed. We have an original data set that we divided uh, or that we used to generate sub data set of different sizes. And for each size, there are multiple train generators. And for each train generators, there are different folds. And there are three folders for each folder, training, test, and validation. And this is the form of resulting directory structure if you use the code that is provided with this article. And this section lists uh, the train generator we used. For example, the rescaling one, it's compulsory when you are training the model and when you are testing the model. And re then there is one more parameter in train generator, which is like rotation range, brightness range, horizontal flip, vertical flip, and so on. It is important to note that when you are using train generator, you are aware of the resulting image because in some cases, when you are using medical images, these train generator can change the category of a specific a uh, class and it will result in false positive uh, false positive it will increase the false positive rate when you are testing the final model uh, based on our observation uh, we we noticed there are four various variants or there are four various ways in which you can use this application uh, this pipeline when you are using custom data set in which the number of images are quite low, it is recommended to use all the steps, which includes trying different shapes, trying various image generator, cross-validation, model training, hyperparameter, and model size reduction. If you are using an existing mobile architecture, then there is no need to reduce the model size. And when pictures are loaded from the gallery, it means that you are not testing images images in real time, so you don't have to use image generator. And if you are using a medical image data set in which changing the shape of an image can change the category, then don't use the first two step, which is trying various shape and various image generator. Once you have developed the model, convert the model to the quantized version and deploy the model on mobile phone and test both models. If the performance is zero for mobile phone, you have to repeat the process and change the hyperparameters. And if the model is good, you are good to go to deploy the application. Once you have the model, uh, these are the only two files that you have to change, uh, the label file and the actual model. We considered four different data sets. The first one is COVID X-ray, which consists of two categories, COVID CT scan, which consists of two categories, leaves, with which there are five categories, and colorectal cancer, that consists of, I think, nine categories. And in application development framework, we have two options, Tensor for light, uh, for real-time testing, and Flutter for digital image testing. The first data set consisted of about 1,458 negative cases and 364 positive cases. The performance of the model was 96 when the size of the image was 200. And when pictures were loaded from the mobile gallery, gallery it was 90%. And when pictures were captured in real time, it was 80. 
For CT scan, the performance on computer was 65 and mobile phone, it was 70 and when picture were captured in real time, it was 50. It is important to note here that we set aside five pictures from each category when we tested the model on mobile phone. For leaves, the classification accuracy on computer was 98, and when pictures were removed from gallery, it was 70, and when pictures were captured in real time, it was 60. For colorectal cancer, there were nine different categories from 50 patients, and we tested the model on the computer in real time, and the final accuracy was 0 0.2. And it means that the model can be deployed. So we uh, changed the hyperparameter for the model and included more layers and converted the model to the quantized variant. And we tried different image generator and we even tried when no train generator uh, is used to train the model. And we increased the image size and tried different deep learning models and the performance increased to 0 0.56% when images were loaded from the gallery. And when we tested, uh, the model when images are captured in real time, the accuracy was very low. There are several applications in which the code and the tutorial can be used. For example, when you are traveling, uh, you can use a uh, uh, medical image classification application. And it can also be used as a clinical tool in the remote areas. And using the code, it can, the applications for multiple diseases can also be developed. And it is important to note that uh, when you are processing images on mobile phone, there, there is a bit difference the, how, the way in which images are processed. For example, and this is the mobile screen uh, that has a size of 480 width and 640 height. Only the black rectangle uh, or the image that is in black rectangle is used for further processing, which is used by uh, mobile, the model deployed in mobile phone for classification. So when you are testing the model in real time, it is important to ensure that image fall under this area for accurate prediction. And there are a few pitfalls and or there are some issues with the data set that we consider. For example, uh, here are two images that belong to one category, but there is a difference of size. Second, there is an issue with the background. For example, for this image, uh, the background is a bit white, and for this one, it's a bit, uh, you can say, orange. The code is available on GitHub. The documentation is available on the second link, and the data set we use is available on this link. And thank you for listening to me.